I just wanted to start off with a little bit of light-hearted humor. I thought this very accurately depicts the conversations that Kate and I regularly have with our developers. So. And just how we feel about Kinexus <laughs> in general. If only, if only our job were that easy, right, Kate? If only that simple. <laughs> So that actually brings us to the theme for this year. So earlier, Greg had spoken about the themes of previous years past. The theme for 2022 is driving usage through simplicity, not just in what we build, but across all of the departments within Kinexus, the OR process, simplifying everyone's instances, clearing out the things that you're not using, we are trying to do the same thing in product. We have spent so much time these past couple years just cranking out features and functionality. We've made a super powerful, extremely configurable system. Now we have the fun part of going back and trying to figure out how can we make that more simple? How can we make that more intuitive? How can we eliminate those barriers to your users adopting the system and being able to use it. Very easy for those of you that are power users and you're in there day in and day out, you have that muscle memory, you know what you're doing. Somebody that's in the system once a month, once a week, once a year, we need, we need to make it a simpler experience for them. I have to give my quick product legalese disclaimer. So we're gonna go over the roadmap, our plan for the rest of the year um, I always say our roadmap is a living, breathing, fluid document. It is a snapshot in time. This is our plan. It's subject to change based on what we hear from you all, what we're hearing from the market. So this is our operating plan as of today. It, it may change depending on what we hear. So this is our roadmap. <laughs> so we set out to do a lot this year. There, there's a ton of stuff on here. I'm not, I'm not gonna speak to all of this in detail, but this was really just to show you guys how much work the team is really cranking out. We set out to do a lot, and you can see in Q1 and Q2 the check marks. We've pretty much ticked off everything that we had set out to do the early part of this year. Our, we have a new developer on our team, and they are keeping Kate and I extremely busy. We are cranking out a ton of features and functions. I hope you all have noticed when you read your release notes that come out every six to eight weeks, we have a ton of stuff coming out and I'm just really excited about what we have planned for the second half of this year. Short-term roadmap. So we are going to dive into our live demo and talk about a mix of what was just recently released, just a couple weeks ago, and what we have coming down the pipe for you in our next couple releases. To start off with, we've got list enhancements. So our item section, extremely powerful. So. I've heard, we refer to everything as lists. I've heard as talking to a lot of you, you kind of, you call them reports. That's where you go into the system and do a lot of your reporting. You use the filter, you're coming up with a list of items that meet, you know, X criteria. The last few releases, we have spent a ton of work enhancing this section and making it more intuitive, more easy to use, easier to share out information that you can capture in this item or in this section of the application. So should we hop over to sure. the demo? Okay, so as Kim mentioned, um, it, it's now referred to as the item section. It used to be lists, but really what you're going in there for is, is a list of items and it's a way to report. We use the item section internally at Kinexus constantly and what we found was our customer base didn't really share that enthusiasm and, and didn't understand the power of the item section. And what we discovered is a lot of that was because it just wasn't very user friendly to work back there. there it wasn't very intuitive. It, it, the functionality varied from screen to screen and it wasn't a very um, continuous experience. So we decided to put a lot of time into it. And over the last three releases or so, 
Uh, Chris has just been uh, banging away at the item section, and it, it has led to a much more usable, um, streamlined experience in the item section. So let's uh, let's hop over in here into into the item section. The the first thing we identified here is there, there's really two different ways our user base interacts with the all items list here. One is they want to come to all items, and it's a blank slate. They want to get a list of all their items and then start filtering it down into the meaningful list for whatever they're trying to report on. The other main use case is like this is kind of their working panel where they want to have a, a filter set shown here listed to a, a certain subset of items. They go out of items, and then they come back and start at that list again and just kind of continue where they left off. We are trying to decide, do we go one route or the other? And what we ultimately decided on is we're going to give people the best of both worlds and let you guys choose how you want to use the item section. So the way that works now is when you first come in here, there is now this feature called enable autosave. So that's going to be disabled by default. If you've never come in here and interacted with this, it is going to be disabled. But um, meaning that each time you come into items, it's going to be no filters applied, it'll be a complete item list of everything in Kinexus, and then you decide how you want to filter down the data. Or you can enable autosave under your actions button here. You'll then get an indicator that autosave is on, and then any changes you make to the filters, the columns, the, um, you know, the quick filters, all of that will then save to this, and it will always be how you left it when you were last in here. Um, another thing we discovered is you can get in here and, and get yourself in trouble really quickly. So let's say you're in here and you're editing your columns, you've removed a bunch of stuff, and you, you thought you got to where you wanted to be, but then you realize, I'm lost. I don't, I don't know how I get back to how I, how I first started. You can now clip, uh, click the little carrot here next to autosave. You can reset list to default, and that will then revert it back to that stock state that you started in. Um, now, the, some of the functionality that was a little inconsistent is when um, like saving a list and identifying when changes to a list have been made. So at this point, anytime you um, apply a quick filter, anytime you change a column, the, the width, the order, any, any changes here will trigger this edited indication here on your all items list. From there, you can click your caret and you can save list as, and you can save that as, as whichever um, whatever list you want that to be, we'll call this Project A. So once you do that, you now have your Project A list. It is separate from your all items list. You'll see it'll appear under your My Lists here uh, under the navigation bar. Um, and once you are once you're in a list that you have saved, the the functionality changes a little bit here. Uh, again, you you obviously still have your autosave, so you can keep any number of lists here. Um, you can enable or disable autosave depending on whether you want your changes to to stick or not. You can save that as another list and make changes and, and then save that list as well. It, it, we're hoping that it works like you would expect it to work because it, it didn't prior. If you still find areas that you're like, that, that's a little odd, we, we would love to hear about it, but we think we're pretty close to how you would expect it to work. Um, one, odd, one other odd experience we had back here was changing the, the title of lists. You had to go to a, a weird screen that was kind of buried. Now you can simply click on the uh, list title, make your changes here, save the title. Again, how, hopefully how you would expect it to work. Um, this one's big, this one's very exciting. We ha now have the ability to share lists as well. Um, <laughs> so prior state, lists were for yourself. You only got to use them um, yourself. There was no way to share out that information. Kim mentioned that lists are used a lot for reporting and you, you know, power users can build very powerful lists, but then you have no way to share that across your customer base. That has now changed with the ability to share a list. So this share option will only be available on a saved list. It will not be available on your all items list. So if you need to share one out, you need to save it as its own list. You come in here to share, um, check the share box. And at this point, you can define both viewers and editors. So viewers are obviously read only. Um, they'll have access to the list and be able to view it. They'll even be able to make changes on their list, but it won't actually apply to the shared list and go to other users. 
And then, of course, you have your editors who can actually make changes that are published out throughout the whole shared list throughout the organization or the users that have access to it. I should have asked this beforehand. Just a quick show of hands. Who in here uses the item section, build lists pretty often, pretty much everybody? And All right. how, how often are you asked to share a report or share a list where you're jumping into this? And yeah. And how did you do it previously? Export to Excel and, and email? Yep. Hopefully, this will save you a little bit of time. Yep. <laughs> What's up, Noah? Noah, Noah, our hype man over here. <laughs> 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 Great question, Noah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so, so viewers can be individuals, they can be network locations, or they can be roles. Um, kind of like how when you um, are editing a board and sharing a board out with the individuals. Editors are limited to individuals. You wouldn't want to you know, put the entire organization as an editor on a list. That didn't make a whole lot of sense. So that, that's individual level. Yes? It does not yet. Not yet. Um, but th that is coming. Um, we're still figuring out a couple things. So, um, th th and that's a good segue into what I wanted to show next. So, there's been some subtle changes to the, the items drop down from the navigation bar. You now have a My List section. So, these are lists that you are either the creator on or someone has designated you as an editor on those lists. So, if um, you know, all these lists either I created or I am an actual editor on these lists. You can also um, have shared lists. So these are, these are lists that have been shared with me that I am just a viewer on. I do not have the ability to edit those. So, so going back to your question, if, if I shared it with someone, it would show up here under the item section under shared lists. But we are doing a notification pass later this year where we, were, where we will, um, you know, generate some kind of notification that a list has been shared with you. And we want to make these shared lists more visually prominent in the app as well. So we'll be, we'll be visiting that too. Exactly. Um, one, oh, one more thing about this. So if someone has shared a list with you and you have essentially read-only access, you can't edit that list. What we mean is you can't edit that list for everyone with whom it's been shared out. You could make changes and then you can do save as and save your own version of that list if you so need. So if you make changes and then save it, you specifically have to save it after the changes have been made. So in the shared list, is it, is it known by the person you shared it with that they're, I mean, there's going to be the L edited, but I go in tomorrow and I forget, and it shows them somehow that uh, this is a shared <laughs> list. So, you know, if you make changes, you save, will publish to everyone. Any save, any save changes will publish to everyone. So show on the list so, make, so they know that this is a shared list. In other words, when you're looking at it, does it stay shared? Oh. Yeah, great question. Yeah. So if you, once you come in here and do share settings, so you'll notice that this uh, share icon is gray right now. It kind of works like the item filter that when you have actually shared this out and have your view, uh, one or more viewers specified, and you save that, that'll turn blue. So this blue indica indicates that it's actually actively being shared out with other people. Good question. Any other questions? All right, All right, let's move on. Are we on to the next one? Yeah. Cool. OK. So in this, staying in this section, one of the other things that we've added that I'm very excited about are we have added, we're calling them quick filters. So you'll notice we've got these standard filters along the top of the list. We've actually given you the ability to configure those now. Yes. So. <laughs> Noah's a big fan, <laughs> our hype man. So the item filter that we have in Kinexus is insanely powerful. It is also not the easiest to use. <laughs> so with quick, quick filters, our aim was to make filtering more accessible to those people that are not in the application every day. So we have the ability to, you've got your add button there. You can add, I believe, up to 10 quick filters. 
And that will just allow you to easily slice and dice the, the data or the items in your list. We have this experience in the item section and on boards, which we'll hop into to now. So the difference between lists and boards, on boards, if you are a board editor, you can curate which quick filters show on your board. So if there is a board that you have, say, for your executives, and you want to very easily allow them to change the date range on some reports that are in there, they could do that via, or they will be able to do that via this feature. So you have the ability to add quick filters, you can show your item filter, and you can show your board or your location filter. We don't recommend showing all of those at once. <laughs> you can pick and choose. But this is a great way to bring the filtering ability to folks in your organization without giving them the, the full-on item filter, which can be a bit daunting at times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a, a while back, a long, long time ago, it feels like, uh, we, we introduced the quick filter with kind of our five canned quick filters, and, and we found that that was overly prescriptive. You know, that, that was the low-hanging fruit. That's what was probably used most common, but there's a million different use cases for quick filters, and we wanted to open that up to be, to be configurable for uh, each board, each list. Um, a couple things here in terms of, of the functionality of this. So, um, you, you noticed here in the item section, it, it's very simple to add and remove quick filters. You have your X next to each one to remove one. You have your plus button and, and select the, the criteria that you want for your quick filter. Boards are a little different. We wanted to limit somewhat the ability to add and remove quick filters from a board because generally when you're publishing a board out to your user base, you, you're you're developing an experience and a use case and a process for that board, and you don't want your users to be able to easily veer off of that. So you can come in here, you can define any number of quick filters on the board. That's what's available to those users on that board that do not have editing permission to that board. Um, so if you come in here and you edit your board, um, you'll notice that there's now a show quick filters option here. You can come in here, you can add up to 10 quick filters. You can even predefine some of these with values. If you wanted the quick filter to automatically select A3, for example, when you come to the board, you can define that here. Or you can leave it blank, and it will just be a blank quick filter for them to use. Um, so that's quick filters. So I, I love the questions. Are there any questions on that? Go ahead. You want to change the order of which they're shown? Yes. Because uh, every time I have to, to, to go to the board, I have to click in a bunch of the different things. The sort order. The sort order. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so like on an impact column, for example, um, yeah, so if you edit a, so under your view options, or sorry, your sort, options on the list. You have your, your primary sort and secondary sort. Um, here's where you can define you know, ascending or descending, and you can pick the column that you want it to sort by. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're asking? Yes, OK, great. Uh-huh. Good question. Oh, uh, I just have a good question. Yeah. So right now, everything you're showing, is that available right now? Or is that, are there features that are coming? Like in terms of the share list? No. Yeah, I guess we didn't preface all this. We didn't. We this did not, is coming in the next phrase. That is coming in the next <laughs> phrase. There Yesterday are, was available. This is Yes, upcoming. there are there are quick filters available today in the item section and on boards. However, the ability to share a list will be coming soon. Yes. On the quick filters, is it going to give values that are tied to your instance? Like, I'm sure the templates I was going to show, whatever your template name. Like under impact, is it going to kind of show the generic kind of same or will it actually 
show the things that you have in your resolution on that pixel chip? So it will show what shows in your item filter today, which should be the impacts that you have for your organization. Yeah, because right now it's just like, I have my hours split up a little bit more, and when I go into an item list, it just shows hours saved, but when my resolution's at, hard to stop and everything from there. So uh, I was just curious, it is what it is, I was just curious as to how, you know, consumed it would be with your engines. Yeah, let, let's look at it, Brian. Um, yeah. I, you know, that's getting a little bit into the, the nuance, but we'll, we'll see what we can do there. Mm -hmm. Plug for the kiosk outside to go submit your product in hand. <laughs> Give these two more work to do. Thanks, Fanna. One thing we also left out is that when you are adding these quick filters to either a list that you will share out or a board, you can also define a default value in that filter. So when somebody comes to the board, for example, if you wanted it filtered to a specific template already, you could set that, that default. So every time you come in, this will be the default that's shown for your users, but they can then go in and, and change that. All right, I guess no questions. We can move on to the next one. So we've been doing a lot of thought just around locations in general, how their drop downs are used, what the experience with the, the board picker, the location board picker, um, how people want to access the network hierarchy, finding your locations. Just we, we put a lot of thought into that in general and making it more intuitive, putting the locations that you are most use or associated with front and center. So what we You've got it there. Okay, so now what we've done is we've enhanced the location dropdown. So when you drop it down, you've got my locations and recent locations. So if you are a user that belongs to more than one location, you can quickly see and select from one of the locations that you belong to. Recent locations are going to be ones that you've used elsewhere in the app. If you were in the reporting section and you filtered down to you know, five or six locations within reports, or you added a location to uh, um, like one of your search criteria on one of your other lists, that's gonna end up showing up in this recent location section. So they're very quick and easy for you to pick, select from there. There is also, if we go, sorry. Do you know what location you want? You can type them and search for the Yes, you can also still type to search. It says, yep, so you can still type just as you always could to get your location there, but we've got the quick selection ones there. And then when you hover over, you'll also notice that icon, so that's your location search. So if you click on that, that's also then going to bring up your network hierarchy. So if you are an instance that has tons and tons of locations, you can quickly drill down into the ones you need there. I feel like this deserves a round of applause. Like this has been asked for so yeah. long. We finally have hierarchy view in the location dropdowns. It is here. I wish I would have written down the ticket numbers for some of these. <laughs> yeah, we, they're old. So we use Jira for our, um, our development planning. And we've actually just crossed, I think, the 10,000 mark. So 10,000 enhancements or tickets in the system. But we ha we've had a couple of oldies that have snuck in the calendar integration that Greg demoed the other day was KAI2, the second enhancement ever put into Kinexus. All right. Um, now we're going to talk about report cards. So this actually came out of a conversation that we had with one of our customers recently. And we have now the ability to put a date filter on a report card. So again, if you have a board curated for one of your departments or you know, your executive team, we've got this, this handy dandy little checkbox here where you can put a date range on here. <laughs> so this is great because not only now 
do you have the report available for people to see? But if they, for whatever reason, wanted to manipulate the date range so they could compare and contrast date periods, they can do easily do that themselves without having to expand the card, change the date filter, collapse, or go into the report itself. So it's just right here, front and center, easy to use. Anything to add on that one? Nope. Too slow, Anna. Um, so somebody mentioned earlier about uh, being able to tell the difference between an engagement or something that was done either on you know, a laptop computer versus uh, the app. Uh, is there a way to distinguish any of that through here um, to be able to show, like if you rolled out the app, the increase in engagement, the kind of the difference? Yeah, so on the item curve report, here you can see the different submissions by device type. So here we can see um, 82 were submitted via the browser app or like the, the full app, one via mobile and zero email and zero kiosk. So you don't have the same date range um, So you can, you can not, this is just informational here, but if you're in your item filter, there is a way to filter down by device. So you can select device, I want to see the number of items submitted via mobile, and then you can do a date range with this in combination with the date range as well. Um, the, this whole item filter is available on reports as well, so you could filter a whole report down based on this. Hey, there are several universal badges that promote different. Good point, Greg. Yep. Yeah. We also have some universal badges that if they submit their 10th improvement via mobile, they get a badge, which you know, kind of gamifies it and, and nudges users in that direction. Okay, so the question was asked yesterday, what is your favorite feature and what does it say about you? <laughs> and I said, mine hasn't been released yet. So this next one is actually one of my favorite features and that I get to use all the time now in our demo instance. So who here has been on an item, closed it out, gotten back to their board or their main screen and said, where did it go? <laughs> Same. Or Every day. just submitted an item and I forgot to add this. Where did it go? Well, now, <laughs> when you click in the search drop down, we have recently viewed. <laughs> I was hoping this was going to be a fan favorite. This is my favorite one. <laughs> So yeah, so anytime you create an item or ones that you've most recently viewed, they're gonna show up here. And we had limited real estate, so I believe we just went with the item title itself, but we do show the template icon, what template it is, the item number, and we've got the, the status bar there. But then you can simply click into that and go back to the item that you were previously working on. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a question. Yes, no. With the recently viewed, you said, you know, I can see those items that I just created. I know technically we get that success message when we create an item, um, and then we have that direct link to that item. Do we have to click that link and actually pull the work panel of that item for it to appear in that, or does it just automatically get added to that? Can, can you guys repeat that? It's hard to hear over here. So the, the question was, when you submit an item, you create an item, you hit submit, you get the pop-up that you know, says, success, congratulations, and it shows the link to the item number itself. Do you have to actually click that link, view the item for it to appear in that dropdown? And I'm looking at Adam, and I was going to say, I, say, I honestly the answer don't is, know, but we happen to have someone who the does. The answer is no, you no. do not. Okay. So once you create an item, you don't actually have to view it. It's going to show up at the top of that list. Thank you, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then now going on to the, the one that I did say was one of my favorites yesterday. I remember this one being your favorite. That's yes. why I did this earlier. <laughs> well, I, I could talk about that one. Oh, sorry, one more question, yes?
Now, in terms of ex user experience, because we face a lot of uh, simple questions, like how do you sort stuff from ascending to descending? So sometimes if you have a self-help button, you can type in how do I do stuff, and then you can list out the steps, which is hard to find in that sometimes. So what we have currently, we do have some areas where we have tooltips that link to our support site with articles on how to use the features and functions. Um, as we go through long-term roadmap, there are some things that we're evaluating that I think may, may help to address that. Greg, did you want to chime in? Yes. Are you adding that one right now, Greg? That list is changing on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> if you only knew, if you only oh, knew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so on to our, we've been calling it a million different things internally, our HTML editor, our formatting toolbar. Who here loved Markdown? Did anybody, does everybody know what Markdown is? Markdown is like the super, yeah, it's like the super secret language that you can use to format your text and that nobody knows. So we've now done away with that and we've got our formatting toolbar. So text areas in the app, comments. Um, I actually don't have, do you have the list of everywhere this is? Um, yeah, so text areas, freestyle, freestyle. cards. Comment. Comments. Login notices. Login notices. You will have, as you click into the area, you'll see this formatting toolbar up here. We've put what we feel are the most used <laughs> options. <laughs> you can add emojis. You can increase your font size. You can do strike through. You can left align, center align. You can add bullets. Um, Table, tables, tables are my favorite. Tables are a big favorite. Yes. Look, look at how easy it is to insert this table. table. Boom. <laughs> um, one of my favorite features here, we can go ahead and um, you can drag and drop images here. You can select this. Yes. My boy Vic over there was very excited and just learned about this this morning. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to add Ophi Juan Kenofi in here because I like adding him to everything. Um, so it'll go ahead and upload that image. We can now drag and drop the image size. Oh, 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 hang on, I've got it. Look at how easy that is. Uh, yeah. No, no more percentages, and, which you can do if you want to. You can click on it and go. Um, you have a lot of settings here. You have your scaling sizes and whatnot. If, if you're, you know, the auto sizing still has a very valid use case, but the, the drag and drop image sizing is great. Um, play around in here. There's a lot of different options. There were options in here that I didn't even know I would find useful that, that I really do. We won't go through them all today, but um, it, it's fun to play around with. And th this is our first pass on the, the formatting toolbar. There are, we have enhancements queued up in the backlog to make enhancements to this, to add more features and functions to this, to add this to more places in the application. Anybody has any, how are we doing on time? <laughs> We're gonna go over. <laughs> All right. So, yes. Yeah. So you can, if you have an image copied to your clipboard and you paste it, we'll paste the image into the field now. Into the table. Yeah. Oh, into the table. You can do images in tables as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, that, I'm not, I don't think I've ever tried that. I don't know. We haven't tried it yet. Adam, do you know? Yeah, we're, we're not sure. Okay. <laughs> yep, copy paste works on mobile as well, right? Yeah. Okay, so another feature that I'm very excited about that will be coming soon who here has been configuring something for someone, maybe it's an executive, maybe it's someone on your team, but they've asked you to come in and create something for them, and because they have different permissions than you do, you don't quite know what their experience is like. Yes. You're in the application. 
So we would like to introduce impersonation mode. You, you can't really see the icon to truly appreciate it, but when you get in there, like, please have a look. He's, he's pretty cool. So what this will allow you to do is to impersonate one of your users. So it will essentially sign you into the application as that person. You will see and interact with the platform exactly as that individual would. There is the pop-up here to let you know this is something that we want to keep track of because you are acting as that person in the application. So it's a bit more guarded. So when you enter into this experience, we will ask you to authenticate again using your credentials. You know, make sure you haven't stepped away from your computer and somebody quick, oh, let me quick get in there and change something. So you're asked to authenticate again, but then you're in. So right now we are in as Amelia. So you can see and do things in the app exactly as Amelia would. So you get to see what that experience looks like. If you are troubleshooting something for one of your users, if you need to set something up for one of your users, just a heads up, the person that you are impersonating will receive an email to let them know that they haven't been impersonated by you. So Amelia, Amelia's getting an email that Kate has impersonated her, but don't be scared, it's okay. It's a friendly email. It's a very it's okay. friendly email, <laughs> yes. And f permissions are yes. Very much so. Yes. yes, very much so. There is, there is a separate permission that needs to be granted to individuals to be able to access this feature. This is fully audited as well, so there's never a question of who is impersonating who. You can always follow that information and know. But any changes you make while impersonating are real world changes. Those changes are saved to the database, so keep that in mind. It's not like, um, it's just like a temporary session that the changes are not being saved. So just speaking about the, the role, that would be a very restricted role. Correct. Correct, yes. Correct yeah, don't, don't just go handing this out willy nilly. <laughs> Does this work with single sign-on? It does. It does, and it's almost, it, it's definitely better with single sign-on, because then you don't need to re-authenticate. If you're already authenticated with your SSO provider, it, it'll be a seamless experience into impersonating mm -hmm. a user, so. Does this only work with active users? So if you wanted to like prep someone Ooh. that was inactive and then flip them after you made the changes or set them up, could you do it when they're inactive? Fabulous question. Set up and capture, yes, I'm hearing. Inactive, no. Okay. So, but yeah, set up would be a great example for that. If you mm -hmm. know they're not ready to be in the system yet, but you want to make sure their experience is good, you could log in under setup status. Inactive or truly inactive users. Mm -hmm. All right. I like questions when you guys have to look at Adam. I think. I'm glad he's right there. And that's great. So. <laughs> um, I think, that I think Adam's going to like duck out real soon. All so. right, should we hop back to the slide presentation quick? Yes. OK, so I am going to run through long-term roadmap kind of quickly, because I was just told we have five minutes left. I'm definitely not going to finish this in five minutes. All right. Multi-language, so Greg spoke a little bit about this yesterday. We do, 30% of our customers are international. We actually have Kinexus being used today in all of these languages. We know that this is a large need for a good portion of our customer base, so you will notice, or maybe you have noticed, with every release we're doing this year, we are doing work to make more areas of the platform translatable. We've also included some enhancements to the translation UI itself to make this easier for those folks to use. Wallboard kiosk mode. So this was an idea that came from one of our customers and when we heard it, we're like, why didn't, why didn't we think of this? So imagine it actually, that- It came from Sudan, he's right here. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. So imagine Wallboard and kiosk had a baby. That's how we socialized it to our, our developers, <laughs> or how we explained it. But essentially what it is, is if you have Wallboard up and you, you're showcasing this you know, around your facilities, why not just also have it be a kiosk, have a create button where somebody could quickly hop in as they pass by and be able to submit their idea. So this is something that we are actively designing and working on now. 
Quick Create. This came up actually on a question. I think it was Christy that asked this on the, in the Whova app. Thank you. So we understand that being able to quickly create tasks, for example, um, is a need. So if you are in a project, for example, and you want to just be able to quickly add tasks to that project, or if you have a, a project that's a personal to-do list and you want to quickly add your personal to-dos, there are so many modals that pop up as you're doing this today. Kate and I are on a modal killing mission. So we are going to make that easier to add, quickly create those tasks, add them, get them added in. We don't have anything to demo or show you on it yet, but we will soon, and we hope everybody's excited about it. How about this one, guys? <laughs> Again, that, that modal killing mission we're on. So inline editing. We want to make the experience more seamless. Today, when you click on an item to edit it, you either have to go to a right-click menu, go to the Actions drop-down to enable your edit, um, or then you have a modal pop-up and everything blacks out and it's kind of a jarring experience. Where did I go? So we are working on that now. Hopefully everyone will be excited to have some more streamlined editing capabilities in the future. Quick action, so here's another one. So we've heard this from other customers that there are just a certain subset of actions that I need to take on a specific item or a specific template, whether it's print, maybe it's convert or transfer, what that actually looks like, this is, I've got a screenshot here. We will actually have the ability to, at the template level, pull out some of those actions and have them appear as buttons underneath your, your reports, add an actions button there. So we can make those very quick and easy to use. Those are just a few. Uh, Laura's telling me I'm out of time. I'm going to keep going until they pull me off. But here's just a, a, a list of, of the, I mean, this is still a fraction of stuff that's to come. So we hope that everybody has been reading those release notes as they come out. Greg mentioned yesterday they are available in our support site. Please contact your CSMs and ask them about the new, infor the new stuff that's coming out and how to take advantage. As I've said again, shameless plug. We need feedback. We want to iterate on these features. These are by no means done just because they've been released. Once they're out in the wild and people are using them, we want to hear how you're using it. We want to hear how you like it. We want feedback on how we can make it better. Anything to add there? No, great. Oh, I'm going to go so over. Capacity planning. So we talked about this a bit yesterday. Greg and Cade showed some functionality on now you've got the user search when you are adding or assigning someone to a team. We are now, go ahead, Greg. Take your time. I have a lot of 15 minutes. I grant you what you need. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> He's the boss, so what he says right. goes. So we will be take. we are working throughout the year with every quarter we've got this on our roadmap to release additional functionality. So looking to add things like, OK, I need to find a person for this team based on this criteria. Great, found that person. Now, what does their workload look like? Are they, are they able to do the work? Are they free? Are they not? OK, well, when will they be free? When can we get this started? So those are the things that we will be adding in to make capacity planning easier, as well as looking long term, OK, what's my team working on? who's you know, overbooked, how can I help distribute that workload. In-app onboarding. So we are looking and exploring avenues to help with people's journey inside of the platform. So whether you are a new user logging in for the first time, maybe it's some type of guided journey that can help you with different areas of the application. Maybe you haven't logged in in three months, we can define a different user journey for you. Maybe it is you are logging in for the first time since we've done a new release, and we want to highlight the awesome new features that we've just released. So that is something that will be coming. 
that we're evaluating now. Additionally, it will also greatly help Kate and I because it will help us view certain analytics, how people are using the system, what features are most used, so that will help um, fuel our decisions by giving us some data there. Mobile. I love the plug Vic did on mobile. We <laughs> understand, though, that there is still more to do. So we have a mobile enhancements pass planned for later this year. Thank you to those who stopped by during the product fair and spoke to me yesterday about mobile. I would love to hear from all of you on this, those of you who are using mobile, how you would like to use mobile, the, your most primary use cases for using the mobile app. We want to make sure that we are hitting all of those and making them as efficient and streamlined as possible. So if you have any comments, concerns, questions um, about mobile, please, by all means, reach out to your CSM, and we'll get some time set up to chat. Notifications in general. So we know that people are constantly bombarded with emails, notifications. There's nothing more daunting than logging into a system and seeing you know, that badge. I'm one of these people. I like to clear all my notifications. It stresses me out when I see some on someone's phone if they have like 30,000 unread emails. Uh, yeah. So we are going to do a notification, a pass on notifications. We want to really make sure that people are getting notified about the right things at the right time and through the right channel, whether it is a push notification, it's an in-app notification, it is an email, whatever that may be. We will be rethinking all of those things and making some enhancements there. We know that email and email needs a little bit of love, so please be on the lookout. We will be enhancing our email content and giving more branding capabilities for email. Executive reporting. There's been a lot of talk this conference about how do I engage my executive team, the type of information they want to see. We do executive fittings, so if you would like that, please reach out. We can set up to have an exec a fitting done with your executives. And what that means, for those of you that don't know, is it could be anything from creating a list of reports or a board, some type of curated experience to showcase the information for that individual in an easy to digest format. What we would like to do is take that a step further and really understand what are the metrics and things that those individuals would like to see and provide that in whatever medium that is, whether it is a weekly, quarterly email, or if it is a board experience, or a simplified experience for those people to get the information they need. Milestones, I actually don't have a lot to say about this one, other than we know milestones need some love, and we are planning to address that this year. We have a lot of enhancements in the backlog that we need to get to on this one. Is there anything you want to add about milestones? Um, nothing specific. We, we're going to look at it holistically, though, probably uh, talk to some of you customers on what you're looking for in that way. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so we actually, we're going to hop back to Kate because we've got one more, one more thing to demo. All right. All right, so er Eric caught me earlier. I got, a, I got a big surprise for everybody. My recent items gave me away, but... Um, I, I have an item titled here called The Big Surprise. <laughs> so um, I have a, it's not very much a surprise yet. It looks like a blank slate to me. I don't have a description or a proposed solution or anything here. But if I click in here into description, we'll see that. Wait, what wait, what, that? What's, what's going on here? What? This job posting. For Adam, are you, di are you bombing our presentation here? What is this? <laughs> For, for, new, for new what? New product manager? <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? I didn't, on, I didn't think we were, I didn't think we were doing that Jeez, bad. man. After oh, all I've done Cade. for you. Oh. No. <laughs> Don't take away Cade. So, we, our working name, I don't, co-editing, collaboration mode. This is, okay, caveat to this, this is something that's truly in alpha, so this is something that we are testing internally, but this would bring like a Google Drive, Google Sheets 
experience to Kinexus. So what we're working with now is that if you have two or more, one, two or more people in a field at the same time, you can see what each other are typing in the field. <laughs> so as I said, this is, this is very much in alpha. <laughs> but yeah, so we are, we are very excited about this. We've been having a lot of fun playing around with this internally. <laughs> So we, there's a little bit of work we have to do yet with regards to, um, to security to make sure that you know, we can roll this out to everybody. But this is, this is something that we very much hope to get in your hands. So as I said, this, this is our, our big reveal. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us to the end.